Shut the fuck up, bitch. This Food Podcast is on. Trying to toast? Oh, of course. Are you trying to hit me in the hit me with that toast? All right, here. Cheers, bro. My bad, bro. That was on me. I'm dying on the fucking first hit like a bitch. Yeah, if you ain't coffee, you ain't smoking. Ooh. That shit is not as smooth, but it's still good. Let's see. I'll let the people know what I'm drinking first. This is unsuing? Unsung. I'm so stupid and faded. Unsung Brewing Company. Nebuloid IPA series. This is Thor Mode Hazy IPA for the percentage for my alcoholics. I'll hit that shit right now. <coughs> <I'm sorry>. 7%. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. I let you down. I usually drink eight or higher, but the can just look too good to pass up. How's that shit hitting, my boy? That shit smacking the joint. <laughs> you're your Gucci man shit or what? Oh, that shit's busting. I got my Gucci, Gucci man face on. On my end, we got another round of Equilibrium Brewery. This one is hydroflo- Hydrophilic. Uh, they, both, they both are pretty light. They both are real hazy, very beautiful. Kind of remember of like some mango juice. Yeah. Shit, you pull us some Malibu. So, I mean, this is the beer. Respect the beer, bro. That would be a sick ass episode where I'm out of Malibu on the table outside just recording with the waves this, in the background. This is sick. This, this podcast moving to Malibu for sure. This whole podcast might fuck around and move to Malibu, but um, drinking that Thor mode from Unsung Brewing Company, so shout out to them. Equilibrium Unsung, shout out to you guys. Actually, let me let me tag them real quick, guys, if you don't mind, because that shit goes. You gotta give credit where credit where credit's due, and you know, hopefully, if you guys are out here drinking independent brewing companies, hopefully, you guys give um, excuse me, you guys, you know. Give them their shout out, help them grow as a brewing company. We just appreciate good beer in this food podcast. Thank you guys for joining us today. As you can see, it's a very special episode. If you guys are listening only, Dave and I are sitting right here next to each other. So that's both in personal today. No social distancing, no mask. It's just <coughs> him and I, just two two brews in this joint. Well, the first time here at this food studio, this food podcast studio. And this is the first rendition of it. Look forward to it. Uh, just how much it's just gonna evolve from here. And um, and I, I feel like it, bro. It feels very homey. Uh, we we got everything we need right here. We got the booze. We got the joints. This shit feels good. It feels good being here. Honestly, right now, it feels really fucking good. I mean, lately we've been doing a lot of um. We're doing a lot of uh, Zoom. You know. Um, episodes which is cool i fuck with zoom but yeah it's it's not the same as being in person talking shit shooting the shit being too sick ass food but um no definitely i'm right here fucking passing it zoom around there's like a third one fucking the roll three joints already today yeah so uh, we'll in case you guys out. didn't know we had a technical difficulties and <laughs> this is round two we had technical difficulties but it just means we got a chance to we had a, a reason to roll another joint <coughs> another joint i mean uh, third one in, it's been a, it's been a sick ass day today. We, we just finished off UFC 261. We're a few hours <coughs> off, off of that show. Shit, <coughs> fuck. And you can see these fucking joints <coughs> smacking all day. I wanted to hit them. I wanted to hit the people with the Elon Musk truck. And I can't because that shit hit me. <coughs> hey, don't hit them with the Elon Musk truck. Show them with the submarine hit. <coughs> oh, shit, I can't right now. <laughs> hit with the submarine hit. My boy just learned the submarine hit today. I feel like a fucking proud father right now. That was fucking good. Don't do drugs, kid. <laughs> uh, like we mentioned earlier, two USC two sixty one. All right, my boy. You had a change of heart in the middle, or like leading into the fight. Who did you originally have, and who did you change it to? Yes, sir. I had Masvidal going in there because in the first fight he accepted that shit in a six day notice, and he took my, uh, Usman to the distance. He gave him a sick ass fight. They went, they went all five rounds, and it was one one by decision. So, I thought that with Masvidal getting a proper camp and the uh, training into in advance, I think I thought he would just fucking uh, beat Usman for sure. But man, just the first couple of excuses in, in, in the first round, Usman just looked on fire. 
that he the machine was out there, uh, the Nigerian nightmare was out there, and he just fucking yeah. uh, you know did did what he does, man, and he fucking knocked him out, knocked him out, put him to sleep. My dog was not moving. He was laying, he was laying flat, he was flat on the mat. It was crazy. They were arguing that he um that he was supposedly awake enough to try to defend, but then he just got hit with the hammer hits, and then that was it. That was yeah, he was. He didn't go out uh, of that first punch, but he was definitely dazed. You can see when he was on the ground, he was trying to cover up. His, uh, oh, excuse me. He was trying to cover up his head, mm -hmm. and he even had like his knee up trying to cover up his body. But yeah, those ha those hammer fists finished him off, and he was just asleep after that. Yeah, he wasn't. Uh, even if he wanted to not have him stop at that time, he was just going to get finished later. You know. He was already dazed. He was already tagged yeah, hard. Yeah, for sure. So there was no point in letting him go any further because, what, maybe three hits into after he initially defended, his arm already dropped. And he was just eating those for punches. Sure. So he would have just delayed the beating an extra few seconds. Post match interview, he was uh, telling his kids that it was any, no big deal. It was like a skill fight, some shit like that. All um, right. I mean, I'm sure that's like the hardest part, having your kids uh, watch you fight. Especially if they're young, if they're uh, of age, I think um, they understand that at a certain age. But if they're young, I mean, I wouldn't want my kids watching. So I think I think it's just a pretty brutal sport. I wouldn't want my kids to see me get knocked out or submitted or even lose a decision. But I think I would let my kids watch because if anything, it's just going to be a learning lesson for them. You know, mm -hmm. that you just got to keep pushing even after the losses, even after you know you don't come up yeah. with the win like you showed them in person that you were training for and stuff like that then at least they know still like there's always more work to be done you never want a kid yeah. to think that he hit the top of the mountain you know that's a that's a good point to be made um but uh going back to six, 261 uh Usman just fucking put up a show bro he was out there in, in that fucking venom gear that fucking black and gold and god damn he just put up a, a performance bro like i couldn't be more uh and I couldn't be more impressed with his with his performance. Uh, he should Usman should give him the fucking bad motherfucker belt too, <laughs> and you know uh, Usman could carry both of those uh, that welterweight and the bad motherfucker title around probably. He should have put that bad motherfucker belt on his dad. That should have went stupid hard. Him wrapped up and his dad wrapped up. <laughs> Hell yeah. That should have been hard. He was there with that fresh fit. And his mom was there with that fresh fit too. That would have been his fucking Father's Day gift. Yeah. <laughs> All last month in events. Hell yeah, that shit went hard. Two months in events. A shout out to him and shout out to Francis Angano. Both, both fucking guys uh, from Africa. I, I know that we have like three African champions right now. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Israel Adesanya. Fucking style bender. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel sick as fuck. Um, yeah, man. Um, I don't know how I feel in terms of a consumer because I wanted to maximize my money's worth on every bout, but a lot of them ended, you know, fucking. Yeah. A lot of them ended really early, so it kind of sucks, but, um, you know, uh, I mean, a fight's a fight. Um, I don't really care. Did you see the controller? So, um, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, like a fight's a fight, but um, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. I guess like, I guess I would have enjoyed that happening in the fifth round. Yeah, but... I, de I definitely wanted to see it go longer. I definitely wanted to see a fucking battle. I wanted to see a little bit of color on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the damn Usman just went to another round, bro. He was in a, he was in a dark place with his mind, and he fucking brought out his A game for sure. Yeah, he's a fucking bad motherfucker. Um, what do you do at this point that he's already given rematches now? That's a tough question, but uh, I think I think the reasonable thing to do is to go up and wait. I think going up and wait would probably be easier than going down and wait or going down a, a division. Yeah. So, so uh, Usman is just a, such a competitor and such a, a, a driven person that I can definitely see him being a two division champion for sure. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, I think this. Yeah, that is a tricky question when it comes to champions that clear their divisions, like Amanda Nunez, fucking Khabib, and now you have 
policeman. Um, I mean, he can always run it back, but at that point, it, I guess it depends on how the fight ended, too. If it goes like, um, Usman and Masvidal is kind of like, the only argument I feel could be really made for that is because uh, Masvidal had a six, uh, six week notice. Mm -hmm. You know, he took that fight with a very, very short notice. And that was yeah. the biggest argument for this fight was that, and, and that just proves what the argument was too, because this was the fight that everyone was arguing, oh, Masvidal never had a full camp, he never had a full camp, and now they mm -hmm. had a full camp, now we're gonna see them really go to work, you know? Yeah. They had the same amount of time in preparation, but I mean, a boy yeah. landed that fucking right, yeah, he dropped that of ass, water. and then just fucking finished him off. Yeah, uh, at that point, see, with knockout, if that was their first bout, and that was how the first bout between them ended, then I can see my, I could see a rematch being more likely because when it comes to TKOs or knockouts, you can make the argument of whether they're full on skill or it's luck. Yeah. So when it ends on that, then it's kind of like you have to run it now because we didn't see them go the full distance, you know? Yeah. Um, but situations like Khabib and, you know, or any other fights that they won through TKO and shit, like, those deserve the rematches and anything that ends in decision, that's kind of like, what's the point, you know? You already went the distance and we saw what happened. Mm -hmm. We saw who would win in the game of distance, so what's the point of really running it back, you know? But, like, uh... Yeah, like fucking Jose Aldo too. That was a fast ass knockout. Hell yeah. They they I thought they should have done that shit back as soon as they uh, were open for yeah. their first fight back. I agree. You know because that's a fast ass knockout. Sometimes the hits really are lucky. Sometimes you really yeah. do land a lucky hit. Uh -huh. And it's kind of like when you land a lucky hit, your opponent doesn't really have much to go off of after that, you know. But if they went to round four and they're going to round five, then you can actually see oh what are these guys finally made out of, you know. Mm -hmm. Cause they're going the fucking distance. I think I think the, them going the distance that might be a little bit harder. Right there. I think uh, that would have been a good fight. I think now it might might be a little too late. I think uh, Aldo is on with his career. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely a fight that I would like to see. That I, I would have liked to, for them to uh, have happened. I know earlier we were mentioning about the Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor fight, uh, yeah. and I think that's more of the trilogy that should more the trilogy that should happen. Yeah, that's it's, um, yeah. Simply that's, because uh, they both had the same victory over each other, that knockout victory over each other, uh, and then I know that the other trilogy that they were looking at is Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor. If you could only pick one, which one would you go for? Definitely Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor for the for the reason I uh, I just mentioned that they both had the same victory over each other. Oh yeah, that's an important yeah that's an important factor too when you think about it because. When you went by decision, it's like okay, it's kind of what the po what the judges felt yeah, like. Yeah, for sure. And then when it's like uh, submission or TKO or even knockout, it's kind of like you have more inclination to run it back, you know. Uh huh. When it's submission, it's kind of like what's the point? When it's submission and decision, what's the point? When it's TKO and knockout, you have every reason to run it back. Submission and decision, it just shows that the judges will see who they think comes out on top when they go all five mm -hmm. or all three in certain cases. And then they'll also see via submission like what their full game is like in its essence, you know? Yeah. They see you stand up, they see your ground game, oh, you lost? And even if they see you go um, submission, most of the time that fight lasts a good amount of time on the feet, you know? So it's kind of like, at that point, why even run it back? You know, you, you yeah. just got outworked in both standing and on the ground. So what would change in the next, in the next bout, you know? Yeah. So, I definitely yeah. think that submission is the more uh, decisive victory, the more convincing victory in MMA, followed by like a knockout or TKO, and then decision. I think TKOs and knockouts gain a lot more value too if you drop them multiple times. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, uh, like in Jose in Aldo versus McGregor, if Aldo had gone up and were actually recovered, and let's say uh, McGregor gets a TKO in round four. Then it's kind of like, now we saw what really happens when it starts exceeding the, the, the time, you know? When it starts heading into late rounds, um, then you see what they basically can do um, when they're tired, when their cardio, if the cardio is still there, are they still hitting um, good shots? Are they kind of slumping now on numbers and shots landed and stuff like that? So when it's TKO or knockout, I could definitely see a rematch being more imminent than fucking 
mm-hmm. losing by submission or decision, but um, because submission that shit's not a uh, uh, instantaneous thing, because you kind of you have to spend time to work yeah. for it, and you gotta lock it. Yeah, I I always saw submission as an agreement, like you got me, you know, like it was an agreement by both parties. Oh yeah, because one of them has to tap him. Let's say one of them can get choked out and shit, but um, yeah, um, like Khabib fucking submitted Connor, and I'm like. There's really no need for a rematch, in yeah. my personal opinion. As much as I would like to see that, especially with the drama that was at stake at that time, I would definitely like to see that, but at the same time, it's like, I already saw how far it goes. Yeah. What's the point, you know? Fucking could be you, man, after just a fucking lobster. That dude is a fucking enigma of a fucking fighter. It's crazy because you don't think that... I don't know, like, you would think, like, as simple as he is, you think that he probably wouldn't make it that far, but he does because he's that fucking good I mean if you want to nitpick you can say the argument oh Khabib's not a natural striker standing up even though he's really dominant mm-hmm. standing up I guess if you want to make the argument of like oh he doesn't fucking you know his punches are wild and they're fucking so spaced out and they're whatever the fuck you know whatever a boxer would say you have to understand too that these guys are taught multiple forms at the same time, so they might not be able to perfect one craft and work on the next craft, you know? Mm-hmm. They kind of have to learn everything together as they go, but, I mean, he's still fucking landing those shots. Yeah. He's still dropping motherfuckers. He dropped Connor first before he went down for the submission. It wasn't just an immediate takedown. He fucking dropped him. Clean, fucking, clean, maybe you can call it a haymaker, but it was clean, landed, Saw Carter's ro- uh, head rock back, and then pa, that was it. Mm-hmm. Played the ground ground game, and then fucking we saw what happened. Choked him out, starts talking shit to Dylan Dennis in the stands. Hopped over that bitch and soared like an eagle into the crowd. Bro, I was at a bar in San Diego watching that fight, and just uh, when he jumped over, and I realized what the fuck was going on. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> you had to realize what was happening because it was just so wild, bro. Like the fact that he really jumped over and started fucking decking into us like that, and then and then Connor's like coach jumped in or his or his teammate. Uh, I mean, I mean, Khabib's coach or or teammate jumped in and started punching Connor inside of the cage, like a two on one inside of the cage. It was just wild, bro. I know they got like a lot of disapproval, but god damn, that show lit. <laughs> That's the thing too. How how many how much morals do you have? You know, like I have a lot of morals, but I love a good brawl and fucking baseball, basketball, God and damn, shit like hell this. Yeah. You like to see drama more involved because it gets more interesting and it gets more personal at that yeah. point. You know, unfortunately, I'm a Conor fan, but I just I've said it so many times. His attitude towards that fight, I didn't fuck with because there's no. Yeah. It's a whole different level of disrespect when you disrespect someone's belief system and. Just all that other shit, you know. But I mean, I know they were both getting out of hand. They were both retaliating with the same amount of hate. So I get it. It's just I enjoy a good rivalry like that, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure, it was good. Um, I don't know if they'll they'll run it back because it seems like he's busy with uh, Corey. I think it's coming up June tenth or July tenth. One of those two real soon. We got that that fight to look forward to, and, and we got the Francis. And Gunn against Derek Lewis, Lewis it seems like. That you, I have to look forward to. Are you disappointed that it's looking like it's Derek Lewis and not John Jones? No, because I know that eventually we'll get John Jones to have a fight. You think so? Yeah, definitely. I don't know if I'm that hopeful. I think in all rea- I think in all honesty, the fact that they can't make this happen is going to make Jones not want to be part of the UFC anymore because if they can't even get him that much money for a big match like that, what bigger match can he be offered where he's worth that 10 mil or whatever the fuck he was asking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think if they can't make this work out, I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if John Jones isn't even in the UFC anymore at that point. What was the number difference you had mentioned earlier about the boxing? Oh, dur- okay, during the first episode before we had our technical <laughs> uh, difficulties, uh, supposedly, it was on Instagram, so take it with a fat-ass handful of salt. Uh, supposedly, a purse difference can wage drastically they were estimating it was either 2019 or 2019 purse, 2018 to 2019 purse uh, for Canelo, and that shit was 10 mil. Now, apparently, Jones last purse, guess how much that shit was? How much? 600k. It's a fucking crazy bro. That's a fucking crazy number difference. That shit didn't even reach a mil. 
And then you have to add nine other mils to that. Trying to put that in perspective, like that's a fuck ton of, of, the, of money. Like That's 60 cents to $10 <laughs> or $5. That's yeah, like, he, $10. like he didn't even make a meal and, and these, these fools over here making 10 or that's a fucking badass difference. And uh, I think you and I both will agree that it should both be paid the same, if not even more. Just because we both we both agree something that we both uh, saw on Instagram that said uh, boxing was a boxing boxing match. I mean, oh yes, I do. Yes, fight. I did. Yeah, there's a post I saw. I, I think it's pretty spot on. Um, the post was a boxer wins in boxing and a you uh, MMA fighter wins in fighting. Mm-hmm. And in all honesty, I mean, maybe you guys haven't been in some. Um, you know, street fights, I guess you want to call schoolyard fights. Um, I mean, I've been in a few. Um, if you guys want to know my record, I'm 5-0 and oh in street fights. Hey, Jake Paul, watch out. My man right Who? here. Who? My man right here is training. You can't see it in frame, but we got the fucking punchy bag, UFC certified punchy bag. UFC grade punchy bag right What'd here. What'd you say? Bl- Blake Joel? <laughs> Blake Hall? What'd you say? Fucking really fight, Jake Paul. <laughs> oh, my... Come on, dog. I'm five and zero street fights. You think I'm gonna fucking lose to that fucking scumbag? <laughs> Fuck that fool. Fuck that fool. That fool's a bitch. That fool. Come on, man. If you wanna fight, you fight the top of the top. Don't fucking cherry pick your fighters to what you feel is gonna win. You know, I'm speaking from a lot of people. T1 needs to run those hands with that fucking trainer, Tyson, his, what that buddy, or whatever the fuck he is. DC Fuck that fool to too. Him. Fucking DC tried to fight him before. DC went up to his face to talk that shit. That, that's a. Fucking to DC, dog. Real ass fool. Fucking shout out to DC. This one, too. Just know this fool podcast fucks with DC like that. I'm a John Jones fan, but at the same time, I'm not a fan of the Coke shit. <laughs> the performance enhancement drugs and the fact that that fool was kind of being a dick to fucking DC. He was a dick. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, fucking T, it's DC all the way, dog. Tell us where you want us posted in Vegas. I will fucking run up on who you want. We'll fucking drop that fool, Jake Paul. We know you don't need our help, but we'll just do it for the fun of it, you know? Hell oh, yeah, fucking TDC. I know he trains out of fucking San Jose. I know that they got they had Kim Velasquez in there when, once when he was training for MMA. I forget a few other teammates they had, but I know that they had a few uh, pretty famous guys in that camp. They probably have a few, but... Yeah. Um, but, but, but going on... Uh, with UFC, fucking Chris, Chris Weidman fucking hurt his, uh, he broke his shin, he broke his shin, broke his leg. I was having difficulty signing into ESPN Plus. Fuck you, ESPN Plus. I, that shit was being so stupid. I bought the pay-per-view. She did not want to let me sign it. She wanted to tell me to buy that shit twice. I told him, suck my left nut. And then I fucking finally got it in. And then when I finally logged in, oh my God, excuse me. As soon as I logged in and... That shit finally went through loading. I just heard everyone screaming and just like, oh, 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 oh like as if they were saying boo. And then um, I saw the replay and damn, Wyman just snapped his fucking, I want to say it was his right leg. Snapped that bitch right. He tried to kick him with under the knee, a little under the knee on the side. And you just see that fucking like hit, crack. And swing like rubber. You think he's thinking about Anderson Silva? He might have realized this could have been karma for that Anderson Silva. Because <laughs> that shit was scary. That shit was... Oh my god. I don't believe in karma, but that... I don't either, but... pretty fuck. fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Uriah... Uriah, Uriah, I think it's Uriah Hall won out by TKO. I didn't even know they were someone else a winner at that point. I thought there would have been no contest. I don't know the rules to that extent, but I thought that would have been a no contest. Well, I think when that happened to Anderson Silva and Chris Fire would give you the victory for that. Oh, he was? Damn, this is fucking payback, I guess. I guess Karma is real. Maybe. I don't fucking know. But, yeah, that shit was just... They're going to run it back, and I hope they do, because why don't you at that point, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. That's obviously sure. a freak injury to happen, so you, yeah. you definitely deserve to run it back. Yeah, and, and especially with... Uh, Going with Anderson Silva, uh, who also had that freak accident. I think uh, both those fights against Chris Feynman, Anderson Silva lost that fight because of the decision that he made, you know, uh, whether in the first fight when I was not putting any hands up and telling him, and in the second one when he just, like, 
I mean, that's not a decision he made, but it was more of, I just feel like losing the fight than Chris Wilder winning the fight. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's true. Damn, um, I mean, the fucking UFC call was crazy today. Uh, the, oh my god, I can't believe I'm blanking on the names, fucking, I'm blanking on her name, fucking, what's her name? Who we got? I got him. I got him right here, fucking. The, what was the woman's belt? We got Zhang Wei Li, sorry if I'm butchering your name, against Rose Bro. Thunder. Rose Thunder? I don't know, I'm Rose Thug, something like you that. You saw that fight. We saw, saw that, that fight. I was walking, walking into the building here at Disco Studios, I walked in, first thing I see on the TV was a fucking leg kick. Fucking smack that bitch with her fucking toes <laughs> right on the chin. It was perfect, perfect hit. Fucking yelled, oh! Fucking, it was, it was crazy. First thing I see was that beautiful knockout. Fucking Rose walks out with a new fucking world title. Uh, and it was lit. Bro, Dude, I, was I would fucking tear my groin if I tried to fucking kick like that. Bro, I was so heated. I, I, I had a feeling that shit was going to happen. And of course, five minutes before the shit happens, I have to go take a shit. <laughs> so I'm in there, and then I just hear, oh, I hear Joe Rogan screaming at the top of his lungs, and the whole crowd screaming. A full pack was 17K fucking people. They didn't give a fuck there. They don't give a fuck in Florida. Shout out to fucking Florida. But, um, yeah, they fucking, I just heard the screaming. I'm just wiping my ass as fast as I can at that point. <laughs> trying to get back here so I can watch that knockout or watch what happened. And now nah, that shit's already over. Oh, yeah. this, this is my beef. This is my gripe with, uh, with fucking, you know, pay-per-view. You pay this much money and then shit like this happens where, yeah, it's cool to see a knockout, but you're not, you're not really getting your money's worth. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. In the first fight, Anthony Smith won in the first round. Uri Shaha won in the first round. Valentina Shevchenko won in the second round. Fucking Rose Thug won the first round at Usman in the second round. Basically, the first round I went to was the second round in, uh, in the entire night. None of them went to the round three, huh? None of them went to the third round. Fucking crazy. Quick fights. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, as a fan, I think that's what you want. You want uh, things to. You want a decisive winner to let things go into decision. But it, it, it is unfortunate when the event just really flies by like that. I think as a fan, as someone a paying patron. Uh, I, you want a sick ass fight, like five rounds. You short. want the full five rounds with the knockout. You yeah. want everything you want with the, the knockout on top, you know? So, I, I mean, that's honestly what I want. I want that at every pay per view event. Um, this is one I bought past fights. Askren, Paul. Um, I illegally streamed that one. <laughs> so, I don't, I mean, I guess that's maybe why I feel more upset about it because I paid for it. But, I mean, at the end of the day, the person I wanted to win won, so I can't complain too much, but yeah. I do have a preference on how I want to fucking see a fight end, you know? I want to mm -hmm. see go the absolute distance and then a fucking knockout. Yeah, I don't sure. care whether it's the reigning champion with the better odds or the underdog. I just want to see a knockout or a TKO, no submission, or a submission, just anything but a fucking decision. Yeah, I definitely thought that this uh, Usman Mark fight was definitely going to go to, like, third round at, at least. Fourth round, fifth round, yeah, I thought uh, there's gonna be, definitely going to be a stoppage somewhere in there. I thought we were going to see a war. I thought it was going to be very brutal, very, very uh, uh, gruesome. But it was when just putting words, man. He won with a double today. You know, I I feel like when it's a situation like those two, mm -hmm. I mean, Masvidal took his first bout with him to off. Five rounds and it went to decision. So yeah, we saw that they can go the distance, and that was Masvidal on a short notice. How does he perform the full camp? And we fucking saw it. You think he got too cocky? You think he was like, I fucking went to this into this one. Yeah, I, th I don't think he. I think he prepared, but I don't think he considered determination on Usman's part. But as a fighter and a competitor, how do you really determine something like that? You don't, you know. You just yeah. go in thinking you're gonna be you're gonna win because you have to go in with that mentality. I'm gonna win. Yeah, I think Masvidal might have underplayed him and Usman fucking uh, overplayed him. You know, fucking yeah. Us Usman said like, "Damn, if this motherfucker is looking to this in, the, in the sixth round, I gotta fucking step up my game." Which he did. He was saying in the post post interview, he was saying how he brought the best in him. I'm sure he, I'm sure his camp was fucking gruesome. I'm sure he went through hell in that camp, and I'm sure he went to a dark place. But goddamn. What a fucking performance! That was a grip. He looked like fucking five percent body fat out there. <laughs> like fucking, he looked like the outside down triangle. Goddamn, what a fucking beast! 
That's a, that's a sign of a good team because most people that uh, win so easily, they usually don't train that hard because they're just already accepted this idea or this universe that they just win everything. Yeah. So to see him overestimate fucking Masvidal, but again, Masvidal's an excellent fighter, so I'm not describing him on a fighter standpoint. It's just Usman, as such of a thing, yes, he did take him too seriously. Mm-hmm. And it showed, and that's what you want to do. You know, you don't ever want to underestimate your opponent. Yeah, for sure. Any competition, whatever sport you play, you don't want to underestimate your opponent, you know? Because that's going to be... It's a lot harder to get past because you are losing to someone you were convinced you're going to beat. So you might not make the right adjustments. You might start fucking up. You might start making mm-hmm. mistakes. Stupid shit, you know? But, um, yeah, Usman did the proper thing and over-prepare. Um, did what he had to do. I... Thought, all right, right off the bat, off the top of my head, I remember thinking this shit was going to go a decision to Usman again. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. I didn't see a knockout submission or anything. I saw another decision. Damn, I, I just based off of the shit talking and just how much in the, in the face they were, I thought they were going to fucking stand up being so they would knock the fuck out. I mean, they're both smart guys. They're not going to play stupid. They're not going to fight stupid, you know? That's true. So, it's like, a, like, do you think we're going to have the same issue with Derek Lewis and, and Gano where they're just so scared of knocking each other out or understanding each other's knockout ability that they just stay at a distance for the whole fight? Shit, I think, I think uh, that's what happened in the first fight. Yeah. And, and, and maybe some conditioning put into that. But I think now leading up to the second fight, they both understand that that's something that they both disappointed in where they were both uh, scared to go in there. I think Derek Lewis more will try and go in there and, and be more on the offensive side just because he is a challenger and I think if I think in between Us uh, not Usman but Engano and Lewis, I think Engano has the more punch power, the more knockout power compared to Lewis. So I think in that fight Lewis will be the more offensive, uh, because I think he has to take take that to Engano who has that one punch knockout at any given moment, you know, so he can be uh, and Gano can be in that defensive state the entire fight because he knows that one punch he can put him out. So I, th- I think uh, Lewis will probably be more on the offensive side compared to the, the first fight that they had. But I, I just hope that both guys are willing to put up a, a good fight because that first fight was really disappointing in between two powerhouses. Yeah, that was just two countries realizing they have nuclear weapons you know, <laughs> and scared the first time. Yeah, before. exactly. But, I mean, it's true, they're fucking animals, and they have crazy knockout power, they have a lot of strength, so yeah. why the fuck would you go recklessly into somebody like that? You know, you're, you're gonna obviously, might overplay it, might overdo it, but, I mean, you're fighting, you're fighting against another guy that might be just like you, or if not better, and you're fighting a, bu- in a, a bunch of a fucking crowd, in, in, in front of a fucking big-ass crowd, yeah. so... I think naturally you would overthink it a little bit and you do want to play it safe as all, as much as you can because who the fuck wants to get knocked out like that? Be another guy on his resume like that in front of a shitload of people, you know? Yeah. I don't think a lot of people understand that. Like, these fighters really take the crowd into their mentality. They really absorb that idea of mm-hmm. 20,000 people watching them, maybe. Unless you're Ben Askren. That fool gives no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still mad about that. I'm still mad that that fool really lost to Jake Paul. But you guys already heard it. You guys already heard it, uh, heard it here, you know. Give me fucking two weeks, bro. 26% body fat, and I'll fucking drop that bitch. Like fucking something that was overdue for a long ass time. Hey, speaking about uh, just time and, and being fit for fights, we, you and I had this fucking wager going oh, on. Oh, uh, so, you heard it last time on that, on that 420 episode where we got a fucking half ounce on the line here. Of course, we're gonna fucking roll that shit and smoke that shit right here on, on the Disco Podcast. So be sure to tune in, tune in regularly for that. Uh, but um, today, we, we we had our official weigh ins. <laughs> fucking, I'll fill you in on my numbers. I weighed in at 200 pounds, body fat at 16 points. I think it's 16.6. I don't know. I just. I think it was 16 even. Let's just fucking go with 16 even. Just a nice, a nice even number. Uh, 60 percent. We're really happy about that, man. I fucking uh, feel real good. I was at 19 percent not too long ago, and uh, 200 at 60 percent. I'm leaning at 12. I'll be real happy if I can get down to 12. 
uh, depending how I physically look, I might want to go a little bit further down. Uh, but but I think 10% right now is something I can totally achieve. Uh, but in terms of um, weight, I'm not sure how much I would want to weight. Uh, just because I don't know what, what, what goal is achievable. But if I just I, if I just throw out a number and a random number out there, I'd say maybe 190, 195. I think that's something achievable. 195, that's whole percent body fat? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so my numbers uh, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, weighing at a, or okay. standing at a five foot nine. Uh, I weigh 209.4. That's, that's a big boy. Body fat percentage. I'm really glad I saw this because it's the reality check that I needed, especially because tomorrow might be the start of the journey. So tomorrow is the start of the journey. What tomorrow's the start of the journey for me, at least. So, in case you guys don't know, we're going to June twenty first to see who gets to their goal. Oh yeah, soon. yeah, we gotta start to to start the summer summer bodies. Yeah, so that's technically when summer starts, right, June twenty. So that's when summer that's when summer starts. And the summer bodies, but really we're training for life. You gotta be fit for life. We're starting the journey for life. You yeah, that, that uh, survival of the fitness shit is fucking real. That shit is very fucking real. Um, like, a, okay, so I was standing at 209.4.6. Um, body fat percentage, man. You know this shit was bad because it was colored red. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was 26.2% body fat. That shit was red. That shit had the nerve to tell me my metabolic age was 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way younger than that. Fuck, I didn't even take a look at my age, but... But fuck, I wouldn't be surprised if you gave me some fucking number like that, too. Yeah, that, um... I knew I was fat. I knew I've been overweight. Um, 26. Because I'm 26 on this shit, metabolic age. That's just a couple years older, no? I'm 24. I'm oh, yeah. 25, I'm more 25. Yeah. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, I... As much as I didn't want to see what it was, I needed to know what it was for my own sake. You know, that's... Yeah. 26% is really bad. Um, it's, it's a slap... It's the reality check I need. Some of us need a reality check, you know? That's true. We can't have shit sugar-coated for the rest of us, you know? At this school podcast, we're bred to be honest and the real of the real. You know, so at least if you guys, hopefully this will inspire some of you guys to create your own journey to fucking be a better Hey, for real, fucking joining our, our challenge. Please, please do fucking let us June, know. June 20th, if it's not that, that far from here, we can maybe get out two months, if that. Fucking, the shirts are going to have to come up sooner or later, bro. It is, man. Um, I know I can do it. I know how my body operates. I think it's a cliche when people say, oh, just learn your body. Mm-hmm. It feels like such a cliche answer to fall out of, excuse me, or to use, but I think it's just really true. You know, your body just, not everyone's body is the same, so some bodies operate different. And like, I think I can get to where I want to go, even with processed food, but I feel like just to make it easier on myself, I shouldn't just have processed food, no matter what, you know? Yeah. Um, when I first worked out fresh out of high school, fresh meat, um, I got to my goal in less than a year. Sick of sick. Like, I legit had a four-pack. I never got the last two, unfortunately. Um, I was, like, 19, 20, and then I fucking had veins popping out the side. I didn't have those nice fucking R&B singer obliques <laughs> cut, that V cut, but my veins still popped out from my side, which was kind of weird-looking. But, I mean, it just showed how much work I was putting in. I used to work out twice a day, almost every single day. I guess it. I dose, you know, you just don't train as hard as one of the days. Fuck a rest. They just don't train that hard, you know? Yeah. Just some mobility exercises, some swimming, some light activity. You're good, man. Just do it. The thing I'm enjoying most about this challenge, I don't even mind paying for half the ounce. I do want to win because my competitive nature wants to win. You just want to smoke that half ounce, man. Yeah, I should just smoke things. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just know that I'm going to push my body to go where it needs to go, you know, for the sake of it. Yeah. So my target weight, I think my target body fat percentage was, what did you say yours was? 10 or 12. I think I said 12 to 13 or 15 at the very, very most. I'm at 26, so that's an 11 pound difference. That's 11, 11 percentage difference. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I would be happy with that, but reality is um, my boy is living a healthier lifestyle. I have to kind of model myself a little bit after you and just 
get to where you're at. If I get into an even better spot, then fuck, so be it, you know? But, um, yeah, 12 to 15 is probably my range. I'll probably try to go as low as I can and then obviously go lower than that. But, um, yeah, man, these weigh-ins, I'm excited. June 20th, we're tapping back in. We're going to let you guys know what's good, what's happening. And hopefully you'll see some noticeable differences. Hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll have some noticeable differences, you know? Hell yeah. And hopefully that'll inspire somebody to fucking get off their ass and fucking bust their ass and get that body they bitch and cry about, you know? We're gonna be smoking that half ounce with the fucking or pack, the two pack at least. Mm-hmm. Fucking definitely uh, in the green zone. So exactly. fucking uh, body fat and fucking uh, just weight in general. Fucking feeling good, fe- feeling confident. And I'm looking forward to it, bro. I'm really proud of us for both for getting to this. I feel real excited and feel ready to start. I hope whoever you're listening to this can can join us. You know because, what they say that they say thirty is a new twenty, so we might as well start now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, health is wealth. So I hope everyone that's interested in taking charge of their health does it. Uh, I hate the whole idea of fat shaming. Mm-hmm. I feel like people need it. I feel like. That weight, that basically, that scale gave me, that scale fat shamed me. I fucking hate it. I was, I've been an uh, uh, overweight person most of my life. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would even consider my, not, myself right now still overweight. Um, but uh, I've, I've been like fat shamed and that shit does not feel good. But I also feel that in that feeling, it's, it's something that motivated myself to, to uh, get myself into better health. And and that, that feeling is like, secondary because really it's, it's mainly about like your health you know really taking care of yourself and really uh treating your body and, and your mind and giving it what it deserves and what it needs but some of us need fat shaming some of us live in a lot of denial and especially in today's climate and generation they just want to promote everyone and everybody but the reality is some of these things are not something that should be promoted like at least health you know yeah. You shouldn't be proud that you're fucking 30, 25, my fucking body fat, my body fat percentage. You shouldn't be proud of it. Like, that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and this idea like, oh, well, they're living their truth and whatnot. Fuck all that living their truth shit. So you just don't want to be held accountable for being unhealthy. That's what I'm hearing. And I hate that. Like, I'm not putting no one under the bus like that, but I personally know people that aren't working out that hard. But they've convinced themselves that they're that they're living their best life yeah. because they're doing the minimum amount of work. And I'm not getting mad at no one. I'm not trying to talk shit. My whole idea is, if you're gonna put in work, don't have ass it. You know, if you want to work out, just don't have ass it. Mm-hmm. I think you owe yourself that at least. You know, put in the full effort and see where you can truly go when you dedicate yourself to bettering yourself. You know, so if you can, by all means, fucking do it. But if you truly cannot, then that's a different story. But the whole idea, like, don't shame fucking Lizzo because she's fat. She's fat and she's big and beautiful. The bitch is fat. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch is fat. What do you fucking want to say? Like, she's not skinny. She's not fat. I'm not even fat shaming her. And this idea of fat shaming is just like, stop being a bitch, man. You're fucking fat. Own the fact that you're fat. If owning the fact, if owning the truth is what bothers you, then that's you. That's not fucking anyone else. That's you. If I'm getting mad that Fernie's telling me that I have 26% body fat, I can't get mad at him. He's only telling me the fucking truth. Mm -hmm. So when people get mad, like, oh, you're fat shaming Lizzo, bro, bro, she's fucking fat. If she's cool with that, then own being 30% body fat, you know? Own that shit. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me and say, I'm fat shaming. So that basically means you're acknowledging you're fat. You're just saying I'm a dick because I'm calling it out. So why even fucking... Why get mad at me? Own that shit, you know? Yeah. But maybe I'm just being a piece of shit because I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, uh, I mean, I mean, shout out to Lizzo, though. <laughs> we love it. Here at this Food Podcast, we fucking love all you food. We fucking love you regardless of all si- uh, sizes and shapes. Uh, but fucking, we want, we want you to live a, a long and healthy life, you know? We want you to be able to do a bunch of shit into your 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, even maybe 100s. You know, um, if it isn't obvious, we obviously like JRE, Joe Rogan Experience. Joe Rogan Podcast, shout out to Joe Rogan. Mark my words, um, this is fucking April 24th. Mark my words, you guys, one day we will be on Joe Rogan. I can't wait for that day to come. Hell yeah. We're going to be stupid faded on that guy's podcast. We're going to appreciate, tell him how much we appreciated what his work was, 
how much we try to model ourselves a little bit after him. But um, I can't wait because um, I just can't wait, man. Like this idea, I know it can happen if we just stick to what we're doing and get there a little bit, you know, or we'll get his attention at some point. But yeah, not, not only are uh, you and I going on, on a fitness journey, but we're also going on just a journey of our goals and we have things that we want to achieve. And uh, we, uh, we hope that this can inspire other people to hopefully achieve, achieve or at least go after what they aspire to be. You know, great, greatness is, is a habit. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a beautiful quote that I like that says, uh, we are what we regularly do. Um, therefore, greatness is a habit, not an act. I might have butchered that a little bit, but I mean, <laughs> I mean it fucking speaks volumes, bro. So fucking, <laughs> you know, uh, it's a powerful message. I know it can be fucking tough. I know I, I don't give my best every single day. And, I, and, and, and it frustrates me that sometimes I'm aware of that. And I still continue to fucking get some bullshit half-assed work. So, I mean, we all got some, some shit to do. But uh, we are, we're on this shit together. And, we're, and this is a podcast. We're encouraging everyone to fucking be their best selves. Yeah. Um, just fucking better yourself for yourself, you know? Don't worry about looking good for Instagram. Don't worry about trying to impress somebody. Just do it for your own sake, you know? Live that healthy, good life. That's all we can say. But um, just to try to get this shit rolling further out, um, so we fucked up on the last 420 episode. You know what we, we fucked up on? We forgot to include the famous blunt rotation. <laughs> so right now we are going to name who we want in a five-man blunt rotation. Um, you want to go first? Fuck it. All right. I got my, my list ready. So you have you got, obviously got to have the fucking father... A podcast, the fucking myth, the man of myth, the legend himself, fucking Joe Rogan. Uh, I would have Elon Musk. Okay. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Okay. And Schoolboy Q. Ooh. And that's with yourself included. And that's with myself included, of course. I feel yeah. like they, uh, every single person brings a different aspect to the fucking rotation. Yeah, that'd be kind of a that'd be a fail if you wanted to make a five man group and you're not involved. <laughs> so you're just gonna watch from the outside. But um, you pretty much took half of my fucking group. So my group was actually gonna be Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Seth Rogan. Um, oh my god, it was either gonna be I think it was. So it's me, Joe Rogan, Seth Rogan, uh, Elon Musk. And I want to give love to my boy Fergie, and it has to get Fergie involved too. So <laughs> the two-man team of this whole podcast with a motherfucking Joe Rogan, Seth Rogan, and Elon Musk, I feel like that would be a lit-ass fucking group. Fucking lit-ass group. Fuck We're it. just geniuses that fucking work at that point. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, it will be fucking 10 million things for sure. I'm fucking stupid faded right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, fucking Big Joe said, and I'm fucking stupid faded too with two beers in. <laughs> and I fucking delicious beer, fucking nice ass joints. Shit. It's fucking lit here at, at this studio for sure. Um, but honestly, man, the fact that this fucking group is lit, like, both groups I think are pretty good opinions and pretty good choices. But I'm gonna fuck. I'll drop my group and I'm gonna just jump in. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just get fucking um, just get stupid faded with you fools, you know. Um. I would ask you who who you would share a beer with, but honestly, bro, if your fucking answer is a Stone Cold, Steve, <laughs> you're fucking wrong, bro. <laughs> oh my god, that was my fucking answer. The rattlesnake himself. That's what I fucking share a beer with. But I would have to yeah. offer a different proposition and just say I have to have a three man group and it has to be this two podcast interviewing Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin hitting him with the hard hitting wrestling questions, you know, that we've been wondering since we were kids. Um, I mean, every Dr. Man has already handled that, so I don't have any more questions, but I just love to drink a fucking beer with him. I'm not drinking Bud Light or Coors Light, whatever the fuck he was drinking. Hey, bro, he's gonna shit. fucking give us some of that. Go for it, PA. Boy, if he gives me that, then I'll be fucking cool, because that shit's bomb as fuck. But. I'm not touching fucking Bud Light or Coors Light. I, I'm not going to disrespect myself. You don't like juice margaritas? No, the wrong margaritas. I know, but it's just so <laughs> fucking That's true. You don't picture that after the first attitude. <laughs> you don't picture margaritas. That's true. 
Um, that's what Sarah put in. She's like, oh, shout out to that fucking call. You know, it's Mexican food, right? Hey, we fucking love fools that love all colors. You know, that's how we feel. We just love everyone. We don't care who you are. Uh, we'll talk shit to you, but it's all out of love. Um, how do you... So we talked about our weigh-ins. We talked about fucking the mods with all fu- and Usman fight. We talked about who we share a beer with. Um, oh, I do want to touch upon... You haven't seen the right Mortal Kombat? I have not seen Mortal Kombat. Okay, I've seen it. Uh, I'm going to try to do a spoiler... Spoiler free review for you guys really really quick. Um, in my honest opinion, the movie was pretty mid. Mm. It was a mid pack. Um, shit was whack. The fighting was cool. There was some gore in there that caught me off guard because I honestly didn't think I was gonna see gore. Maybe it was a radar movie and I didn't realize it. And it was a PG and I thought it was a PG thirteen movie. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in all honesty. Maybe I'm just being biased because I was, a, I was going into film, mm-hmm. so I naturally nitpick a lot of film and TV. I feel like I shouldn't, but I mean that's just how I've been programmed at this time. Um, but analyzing the moving question, the motives, the reasons for why these characters do what they do, that shit made that those ideas and questions make that movie very mediocre to me. I'm not surprised if it gets a 45 to 50 on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but the fighting was cool. Uh, it was kind of cringy because they forced a lot of the sayings in uh, the in the game mm-hmm. to the fucking film. So, like, one character, I'm not going to try to spoil it, but one character kills another character. And then that character says, Flawless Victory. So, if you played the games, you know that Flawless Victory is when you hit your opponent yeah. and you finish them and you don't take any damage. So, of course, this character says that. Um, I'm not against that. I mean, it's just kind of funny when they work these type of things into a movie. Yeah, it's random, right? It's kind of random. It's kind of like you know they're doing it for the fan yeah. service, you know? So it's not like it makes sense it's dialogue like an Easter wise. egg almost. Yeah, like it could be funny that out of nowhere they're just like, show me your moves or like finish and you're just like, what? Like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about, you know? Toasty! <laughs> 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 Uh, I mean, the movie was cool. Scorpion and Sub Zero had their big battle. That's what we all really care for at the end of the day. Uh-huh. You're either Team Sub Zero or you're Team Scorpion. Where are you? I'm Team Scorpion. I would say fucking Scorpion too. All right, let's, let's fucking go. But um, yeah, they had their cool moments. I fuck with it. Uh, story and dialogue wise, it's really mediocre. Fighting wise, it's great. Can't really complain. It's based off a fucking video game. There's supposedly this infamous, you know, internet. Conversation curse that's uh, every video game movie will basically ever be a decent good movie because it's just a video game movie That's like the curse of it supposedly. I mean, I don't know how true that holds because I was told Sonic the Hedgehog was a really good movie that came out. So. It came out at the beginning of the pandemic like February 2020. I just remember people being fucking heated about the first uh, sketch of Sonic. Oh. <laughs> hey, are you gonna pretend like that shit didn't look like shit? That shit did look like shit. <laughs> That shit was fucking whack. That shit was stupid. They, it's so stupid. Like it's a fucking game about a talking hedgehog that runs really fast. <laughs> Why the fuck are we trying to make him look realistic? <laughs> Just fucking make him look cartoony at that point. I heard that there's a new trick out there, and they show uh, knuckles in it. There was pictures this past week on Twitter about fucking knuckles. When they have shadow on there, that's not start fucking watching. Shadow Did you play that shadow game? game? Hell yeah. Oh, that, that shit was game. fucking fire, bro. Hell yeah. I had that saved to my Amazon card. That shit went up to $60. I ain't what buying that the shit. Fuck? I'm not buying that shit no more. That shit was $20. There was only like two left. I was going to buy it, then I the, backed out the like a bitch. You, you could decide to be a baby face and heal, right? Huh? The one where you could be decide where you can decide to be baby face or heel. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, I think that's Sonic Adventure Two. Nah, it was just straight hedgehog. It's very, oh it's really? Straight, straight shadow. Shit. I don't. Yeah. Oh I yeah, there was like a light and dark side, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I picked dark side. That's the shadow. I just, balls, I just went full on dark. That's a shadow game. I'm talking about. I don't know what would I take. I played that shit maybe like four times just to try and get different endings. Sonic the Hedgehog with the fucking Mac Ten. I don't fucking remember. I played it. <laughs> that boy had a fucking gun. That boy, yeah, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, that's what she like, the SWAT team and shit. That fool, he had them cat the fucking SWAT team and shit. That fool was packing some heat and shit. That fool was packing yeah. heat. That fool was on skates and shit, blasting fools. Mm-hmm. That shit was lit. So, mm-hmm. so fucking, once they have Shadow on that bitch, I'll probably start watching. Hey, for real, man. That was my favorite character. I remember when I used to yeah. call me as a kid, I had a Superman Returns toy. And it was from the 2005, 2006 movie, somewhere mm-hmm. around that time. There was a Superman movie. Um... I remember I went to the swap meet looking for a shadow toy, like a little plush toy. Mm-hmm. And I remember like as a kid, I was like, oh, these guys are going to fight and shit. You know, like that was my whole thing. And I remember I've just been in love with shadow ever since Sonic Adventure 2, which was that weird one where you can like pick either side. You had like Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. And then mm-hmm. I think Shadow's side was Shadow, that bitch that fucks with Knuckles, that has a little heart. Yeah. Best thing or whatever the fuck that was on her titties. <laughs> and then Dr. Eggman. Yeah, so that game was cool too, but Shadow the Hedgehog man just stole my fucking heart. Yeah. Especially because, like, as a kid, that's the time we started learning about Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Play Shadow the Hedgehog. It's a fucking. It's Sonic. What was the first Grand Theft Auto you played? Huh? What was the first Grand Theft Auto you played? Uh, San Andreas. San Andreas? Yeah. Fucking successful. My, mine was uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. Actually, I think I'm fucking up. I think I might. There was one I did play before that when I was 12. And it was, um. I'm not that old. I was just playing the game at that time. Um, that shit was. Sonic. No, it was Sonic. What the fuck was I talking about? It was Grand Theft Auto 2 or 3, and it was the one where the camera is looking down. Oh, it's one or two then. Huh? It's one or two then. Because the like, first. The first two Grand Theft Autos. Oh, so right was Grand Theft Auto three the my uh, the Vice City one? No, Grand Theft Auto three was the first. Uh, was it Tony Tsukurami one? I think. And that was was it the first three D world? It was a, it, it was the first one where you could have like a like a three D not a three D a third person third person perspective of the main character. Oh yeah, so I played the one before that. Then I played the one where it's the top. It's a bird's yeah. eye view down on the. Yeah, that's that's one. Yeah, or two. and you're just like running around all yeah. weird and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I played. That was the first one I played, but uh, other than that, hold on, guys. Uh, Joe Rogan, fucking moment, bathroom break. <laughs> Hate it, ass fool. Um, is she still recording? Let's check. E, that she's still recording 58 minutes in. Too long. Too fucking long. All right, hold on. Down three, get it to me. <laughs> Damn, boy, you haven't used the bathroom since before the first episode started. Look, bro, I drink a lot of water. Um, but damn, bro, every time I do that a pee, it's just like I'm about to fucking piss my pants. <laughs> you don't like, have to go right now? I don't have to go right now. But whenever I do go, it's like I gotta fucking go. Like today, today I, to, I stopped like three times. I said, you know what? Fuck Jeff Bezos. Fuck this car. <laughs> I'm gonna go use the restroom. So. You want another one or you good? 
Yeah, I'm good because then I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay till like three, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Until you still grow up for a while. For real. I don't got shit to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Except go to the gym? Because you know that fitness tour just started right now, so you know it's fucking good. For real. Hey, bro, is that shit still, should we light that one up again or what? No, I think it's out. The paper, the paper kind of burned, uh, so it's kind of just done. It's already out. This one? Oh, shit, my bad. Hold on. You know, this one's already done. Oh, let me see. No, beta is far farther than the other one. There's probably like two hits in there. Two, three hits. Should we fucking wrap this bitch up? It's already like one hour in. That's what my recording said. Oh yeah, my shit's one hour in too. It's just a minute later than yours. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, that's pretty much it. We just have to wrap up soon. Pretty much it, that's it. Oh, shit, okay. What did we talk about in the last one? I think we covered most of it. No, but what did we talk about? Was there additional topics we didn't we touched upon that we didn't originally touch upon? Um, I don't think so. Or at least not at the top of the dome. Oh, we're just going off on the top of the dome. Caitlyn Jenner, we'll just wrap it on there. <laughs> okay, um, go for it. Just take it off, and I'll just I'll wrap up after that. All right, three, three, two, one. All right, guys. Three, two, one. All right, another brewski because your boy ran out. Melvin Brewing Company. I'm assuming double IPA, two by four. I drink this either last Monday or the Saturday before that, you guys. 9.9%, um, .9%, god damn, this motherfucker's strong. I feel good, I feel like when we're at the brewery, I feel really good right now. I feel good too. This shit's fucking lit. Hey boy, if you ever get too fucking faded here, you're, you're, you're always welcome to stay here overnight. At fucking this, this whole podcast? At this whole podcast studio, bro, just letting you know that. <laughs> Uh, I don't want my homies drink uh, driving home on sa uh, not safe, you know. I don't hey, that shit. we do not advocate fucking drinking and driving, right? We podcast. don't need that shit over here on this site, you know. We want all fools to make it back. Uh, so seven percent, eight point five, and nine percent. So you know your boy can handle his fucking. You shit. You can see that fucking lineup right there. We got a beautiful lineup. We got all the fucking beers uh, on our on our IG page at this Food podcast. We got them lined up. We got them highlighted. We got them tagged. Uh, fucking take a sip, bro. Whenever you're ready, uh, there's a <laughs> let us know. Fucking, what do you think? I fucking love weed and I love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Let you guys know off the bat. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a fuckload of head. That's a lot yeah. of head. Yeah. I did a little too much head. But, uh, <laughs> <coughs> um, <coughs> what were we talking about? Shit, I don't know what we were fucking, uh, what we were talking about. But fucking, all I know is that for some reason, Kaylin Jenner is the fucking governor of California, dog. I mean, we gotta fucking use some dictator, use some over here telling people what they can and can't open. Fucking Kaylin Jenner is over here trying to try and run, bro. How fucking disrespectful is that? It's so fucking dumb. Um, well, man, I don't have too much to say about this shit, to be honest. Um, what I will say is, do we really need this fucking bitch as our governor? Do we really, do we really need another rich Republican as a good fucking governor? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to expect out of her policies. I don't really give a fuck. Um, some people might try to say it's like some, some type of weird phobia. I already know how the internet works. It's not. It's just like, come on, dude. We, we what the fuck can we even expect anymore out of our fucking officials? Yeah. Man? Out of our fucking government officials. Um, I know Gov uh, Governor Newsom is fucking facing a big ass recall. We've been talking about it a few past episodes. Um, the recalling him, I mean, I see it happening no matter what. And uh, California's kind of been a shitstorm during the whole COVID situation. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, we know the rest of the country was too, but I mean, this just takes the cake, you know. Um, I'm not surprised at this point. I honestly don't care, but I just, I will prefer not having Caitlyn Jenner because in all honesty, I don't feel like she has a lot to offer. 
Department. I don't know what she has to offer. And there's the whole story right now that she still has been prosecuted for that hit and run that she had. Yeah. So, I don't know if I want my governor being a fucking... She fought real hard for that case, and I'll fucking come yeah. see that, that one. So, I don't know how I feel about that leaving my state, but... I mean, I don't know. It's like... I don't believe in parties. I believe in ideas. So unless she has like some crazy ass good ideas and she has an actual plan of execution for these ideas, mm -hmm. then I can get behind it. But until that day comes, I'm just not feeling that other celebrity in some sort of position of power. Oh, definitely. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy how like uh, how I wouldn't say calm, mm -hmm. but the difference in tension, the difference in the tension levels have definitely calmed down after. Uh, Trump has left an office, and, and whether that be, that's because of uh, celebrity or just Trump's persona himself, uh, but but things have definitely come down, and I don't think this country is ready for that again. I mean, we got fucking sleepy Joe Biden in office, <laughs> and all, all kind of fucking problems. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to expect. Uh, I feel like my expectations are somehow on the ground, and these motherfuckers brought a shovel. <laughs> we're able to dig some deeper fucking disappointments, but I mean, all right. Big question: Do you think we should open up already? Like that said, no more masks, full capacity. Damn, I don't know. I I'm not uh, educated in that to make a, a a good a good assumption. Okay. I I think uh, the other thing we could do is let people make their own decisions. So whether people want to open up or not, I think it's up to them. Who am I to tell you that you can open up your business or that your business is not essential? It's definitely essential to somebody, whether it's you or to a customer. Uh, so I think definitely the option should be given to the people whether they want to open up or not. I understand that, that they try to go down to minimize the virus or to minimize the chances of, of the contagion or the transmittency of it, but it's definitely not worth it. Especially when you compare the numbers of states who have gone into more uh, rigorous lockdowns because states that have been more lenient. Uh, so I don't think the numbers really match up to what we, the people are pushing. Uh, so I wouldn't go full blown Texas and not, rec and not require a mask, but I would definitely tell everyone to open up to, or to have the option to open up, but definitely implement social distancing, mask, uh, just for these couple of months that we started to really see how opening up is going to affect the population and the rates of infection. Mm, okay, I feel you. Um, I honestly don't know what to expect from that. <laughs> I just, I mean, if the numbers are getting lower, do we really have to rely on herd, herd immunity, I guess? I mean... I think I, it's, it's funny that we're talking about this now when we just fucking saw UFC 261 where they had a <laughs> packed arena. Oh my god. You know, and, and only like the fucking officials were wearing a mask and shit. Shout out to no fucking one in the crowd. Florida for just no not one, giving a fuck. No one in the crowd was wearing a mask and people were fucking stacked in there. No pandemic, no nothing. That shit was all fucking just a movie. You know, and, but uh, we'll see the transmittency rate of that. You know, who knows? Maybe most of the people were vaccinated. Maybe they all got fucking COVID test before they walked in there. Who knows? We don't know the details of that, but but uh, we'll see. We'll see how how those people fucking come out of this then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really don't... I honestly don't know what to expect. I don't know what to think. Um, I'm assuming the next UFC event, UFC 262, I'm assuming it's going to be in front of a big open crowd. I don't know. I don't know. I think the the next event it might be uh, Corey and McGregor, and now that one's gonna be in Vegas. Nah, really? Yeah, that one's gonna nah. be in Vegas. All right, guys, hold on. Let me. I have to double check that shit, cause that's um. Pull that shit up, Dave. You want me to pull that shit up? All right, let's see. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, I'm fading this. Fuck, in case you guys can't tell, my hands feel extremely slow. It's no, it's the fucking Oliveira versus Chandler fight. Mm. That's May 15th, and that is at the Toyota Center. Oh, wow. Okay. Toyota Center, where the fuck is that? Let's see. If it's not fucking Angel Stadium, it's Stadio Azteca. 
Fucking Eddie has say them out of all that shit, bro. I haven't seen Toyota Arena in this thing. It's Ontario, California. What the fuck? Hey, hey, this one. Hey, they know why we paid for this shit today. <laughs> we paid this shit, so now it's your turn, bro. You got fucking the next tab. And now that was a Toyota Arena. We're not too far. This from might Ontario. be Toyota Center, which is in fuck. Houston, Texas. Fucking <laughs> <Yeah, he> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it's fucking Oliveira versus Chandler, Edward versus Nate Diaz. Oh. Yeah, it's a good card. Tony Ferguson versus Daniel Derouche. I don't know if I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But um, Saturday, May 15, 7 p.m., Toyota Center pay per view. What do you think, my boy? Damn, I think that's a fucking sickest card. And it sounds like another fucking podcast episode coming from this podcast when that shit comes out. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, fuck yeah, this is a fucking, in case you guys don't know, this is our first time being in an in-person studio. I think the previous ep- episode was even better. I think this time that we had more brews and more blunts in us. Fucking, I feel like we, more blunts, more joints in us. I think we're a little more relaxed. Um, but other than that, you guys, I mean, this has been a fucking amazing yeah, episode. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't be surprised if you start seeing this as fucking, um, our new setup. Hey, we went from Zoom and now we're in person and this shit's only getting better, like we said. Fucking, this is the first iteration of the fucking studio and it's only gonna get better. We, this shit was fucking quick. This shit was very uh, quick. And I mean, I fuck with it. I hope you guys fuck with it. Uh, we like it. We like the beer. We like the joints. We got the setup. And we're fucking liking where we're taking this shit. And I hope you guys are willing to join us for where we want to take this shit. Yeah, um, definitely, guys. Uh, stay tuned in and enjoy this podcast. Uh, we thank you guys for all that have been listening so far. We do look at the statistics and we enjoy every single and we appreciate every single person that's giving us the time of day. Um, just to let you guys know, uh, in case you guys want a brief overview of basically what we like to talk about, it's MMA, wrestling, um, sports, whether it's fucking regular American sports or then including European football. And then we also talk about just shit we watch, shit we play, shit we wear, shit we drink, especially the beer and the blunts. That's always included in our fucking podcast. Yes, sir. And um, we talk about anything that's political and going on right now, too. We don't care. No topic is safe in this fucking, this studio. Every topic can get these hands, whether they like it or not. Um, we love you guys. We can't tell you guys how much we appreciate it. I am stupid faded. I'm going to take the <laughs> right now. <laughs> So I'm sorry if I seem all slumped out right now. I mean, like I said, this is our second take on our fucking earlier episode, which started around 10. I don't know when the fuck it started. That shit started a minute ago, but unfortunately, we've been here for two hours trying to record this episode. So thank you guys again. Um, hopefully, I heard, I hope Joe Rogan hears this one day and he just says, come through. Hell yeah. I'll quit my job on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whether you're, whether you're doing this or, or listen to this, we really appreciate it. Fucking okay, follow us on IG at this podcast. Hit us up on YouTube at this podcast. Uh, and we're coming to the platforms near you, bro. Fucking uh, all of our THC shit is up on our IG too. All of our beers are up on there. So if you, if you see some of this shit or hear some of this shit and you want to try it out, fucking check us out. We got everything linked up. If you're a brewery and you want our shit and you want to send that shit, hit us up too. Fucking we'll see you until the next time, hey, bro. This shit was fucking lit. Okay. It was, I, I'm really happy for, that we're finally doing this in person. And yeah. this shit's only going to take off from here. We always, fun fact, we started this in December and we're apparently putting our first in person studio episode in April. Fucking the pandemic slows uh, some shit down, but fuck it, bro. We really fucking made the most of it. Now we're here. Like, and uh, just to cap it off, you don't want this smoke, Jake Paul. <laughs> you don't want this fucking smoke with this whole podcast. Latest podcast you're gonna listen to, real ass fools. Um, we're not the we're not Generation Z, we're millennials. So hopefully our crowd fucks with us. But until then, we'll talk about wrestling. We'll talk about whatever else is popping in the UFC, um, music, whatever the fuck you guys want to send us recommendations. Please uh, do so at this cool podcast on IG. Um, yeah, man. At the end of the day, we just appreciate anyone and everyone that listens. So until then, guys. Salutations. <laughs>